Welcome to Chapter 7, ANOVA and F-Test, the video series hosted by me, Tim Smith, on the workbook of Quantitative Tools and Techniques in Marketing, 2nd Edition. In this chapter, we're going to move on from the T-Test into another form of looking at samples and determining if they are the same or different, if they're from the same population or from different populations. As we increase the number of samples we're looking at, we need to clarify a few terms. So we'll begin with the issue of variables. Uh, we classify variables as one of two types. They can either be independent variables or they can be dependent variables. Independent variables are variables which can vary independently of other variables. Dependent variables are variables which vary dependent upon some other variable, the independent variable. Here's an example. Gender is typically an independent variable, not something you can actually control. You simply have a gender. Now, the willingness to play with dolls versus trucks in market research is often found to be dependent upon gender. And they've tried to switch this, but no, there seems to be some relationship between gender and your desire to play with dolls or your desire to play with trucks as a small child. Another example, age, nothing you can do about it. It's an independent variable. But the willingness to drink coffee is often found to be dependent upon age. It doesn't have to be linearly dependent. It's just dependent upon age. So here's a couple of examples of independent and dependent variables. And the dependent variables are a function of the independent variables. The next concept we need to discuss is degrees of freedom. And this is a this is defined to be the number of items within a statistical calculation that are free to vary. Nice technical description. Uh, we're going to show you a couple of ways for degrees of freedom come into interaction. The first way you've actually already seen. In calculating the average of a sample, the number of items in that sample, n, is the degrees of freedom in that statistical calculation. So we took, to find the numerical mean, we took the sum of the items over the number of items in there, n. In contrast, when we're calculating the standard deviation of a sample, the number of items less 1, or n minus 1, is the degrees of freedom for this statistical calculation. Why do we use n minus 1 when calculating the standard deviation of a sample? You recall that from a prior chapter. It's because this calculation of the standard deviation involves the use of the statistical average. Remember, x bar was in the calculation for s which already used one of those degrees of freedom. So we have to take away one of those because we're short one, and now we have n minus one degrees of freedom. Other statistical tests will require different approaches to identifying the degrees of freedom. We'll be in calculating F tests, this does play a role, especially in the actual formulas. So here is what an F test does. The F-test examines the ratio of the variability between groups to the variability within groups. See it? It's looking for variance. Now, variance is very closely related to uh, standard deviation. For a simple sample, variance is a standard deviation squared. So the F-test is looking at the variance between the groups or between the samples comparing it to the variance within the samples. So the variance of one sample versus the other sample, and then the variance within individual samples, sample A and sample B and sample C. You see, the F-test is what you use when looking at numerical data from three or more groups. When we did the T-test, we were only looking at two, two samples. And the t-test is appropriate to use with two and only two groups. But when you start to have three or more groups, it's usually best to use this f-test. And this f-test is going to look at how the variance between the groups 
is, is related to the variance within the groups, within individual groups. Now, there's a large number of formulas that you can find in your book. You will also find these formulas within any standard statistics book that allows you to calculate all these uh, parts for the F test. It requires you find the mean within the individual groups, the variance of the individual groups, and then the variance, of course, being the standard deviation squared. Then the grand mean, or the mean across all the groups, and the sum of squares within groups, which is very related to the variance within groups, the sum of squares within between groups, or the variance between all the groups, the means of all the groups, and then finally the degrees of freedom within groups, the degrees of freedom between groups, then you find the mean squares within groups, and the mean squares between groups, and finally you calculate the variance between groups and within groups. You can see those equations on page 141 and 142 of your text. A lot of equations. We don't have to do that. We can simply use Excel to go and calculate things for us. They'll calculate all of these mean squares, and etc. But the cool thing is that it'll also calculate something called that p-value. Remember when we did the t-test? All we had to do is find the p-value to say, is it statistically significant or not? Well, you do the same thing here. We'll find the p-value from the f-test to determine if the differences are statistically significant or not between the groups. To do this, we'll use a tool within Excel called ANOVA. ANOVA, or Analysis of Variance, will examine the differences between the groups. So F-Test is a type of ANOVA. You will also see ANOVA tables with some other forms of, it, of a statistical analysis. So there are a couple of kinds of ANOVA, a couple of things that affect the ANOVA. Just as in T-Test, we have to determine if it was one tail or two tail. We had to determine if it was paired, homoscedastic, or heteroscedastic. With ANOVA, we'll have to say, is it a between groups, where the samples are separate and independent of each other? Or if it's a repeated measure ANOVA, where the sampling units are reused, but underneath different treatments. For example, sales at the same stores with different levels of advertising, or sales at different stores with different levels of advertising. Those are two types of ANOVA, the one between and the one with repeated measures. The next idea that we'll have to look is, is it one way or two way? And one way means the single factor of variance. This means we have one independent variable and we're looking at the dependent variable, such as sales. The independent variables might be levels of advertising, low, medium, high. Notice those are discrete levels. Uh, two-way would imply there's two factors that could be driving the variance, two factors, such as sales and its dependence upon advertising level and the color of advertising. So now we have two independent variables and one dependent variable, sales. And we're trying to see, is sales actually dependent upon these independent variables? So we can either do one-way or two-way, and these are a couple of other between groups and repeated measure ANOVA. The F-test and other aspects of ANOVA can be calculated by hand or with a calculator. Perhaps you've done this in another course. Or we can let software do this for us and instead just focus on interpreting the data. Now, the focus of this workbook isn't to show you how to do all the stats and understand the theory of statistical analysis. The point of this workbook is to enable you to examine and interpret data. So we spent our first five weeks examining data. We're spending our next five weeks interpreting data. And we're in the second part of that, of interpreting data. So let's focus just on interpreting that data. Specifically, what does this mean? Are these groups different, or are they from the same population? So let's let Excel do all the calculating for us, and instead we're just going to focus on the interpretation.